All right, good morning, everyone. I am really happy to be with you today talking about quality of life and mindfulness. Let's see if we can get the slides up on the screen. Great, thank you. <clears throat> so as you heard, I am a palliative medicine physician at Mayo Clinic in Jacksonville, Florida. And um, many of you probably want to know what on earth that means. Some of you may have an idea of palliative medicine, some of you may not. I'll say that palliative medicine really is a medical specialty that focuses in on quality of life. That can be for anyone with a serious, chronic, or progressive illness, regardless of time, regardless of treatments, and we really do function as an additional layer of support. So with that being said, when we talk about quality of life, what do we mean? Right. When we think about quality of life, we think about really the mind, the body, and the spirit, and how those things intertwine in order to affect quality. So for the body, we might be thinking about physical symptoms, right? weakness, pain, constipation, shortness of breath. For the mind, we might be thinking about stress, anxiety, coping, and adjusting to everything that's going on. And for the spirit, for the spirit, we think about some of the social aspects of our life, hobbies and activities we enjoy, really anything that fosters a sense of connection, and things that bring a sense of meaning and purpose to our lives. It's our goals and what matters most to us. And these are things that may need to be assessed and reassessed as time goes on. We know that ALS impacts quality of life in a variety of ways. And we know that there is this kind of interconnectedness between the mind, the body, and the spirit. So if you have a physical symptom, right, weakness, for example, or pain, that certainly can impact the mind, right? It might cause more stress, more worry, and vice versa. So as a palliative medicine provider, I may not be able to take away the diagnosis, but I do work with people to try and optimize how they feel and how they are living in the setting of their illness. With that being said, if you do not already have a palliative provider on your team and you are someone who is living with ALS, I strongly encourage you to seek out palliative care as part of your team. So on to mindfulness. For mindfulness, I'm first gonna share with you a children's story. This is a story for children, obviously, but also those of us who are children at heart. It's titled Mindful Monkey, Happy Panda. It's written by Lauren Alderfer and illustrated by Carrie Lee McLean. So this is the story of Monkey and Panda. Now Monkey is walking along one day and bumps into Panda. He sits down and says, Panda, I just don't get it. What do you do to be so happy and so peaceful? The Panda replies, well, I walk, I work, I read, I eat, I play, and I rest. And Monkey says, well, I just don't get it. I do all those same things. I walk, I work, I read, I eat, I play, and I rest too, but I'm not as peaceful as you are, Panda. What is it that you do? And the Panda says, well, Monkey, what is it that you're thinking about when you're doing each of these things? So the Monkey thinks for a second, and he says, well, when I'm walking, I'm usually thinking about work. When I'm working, I'm thinking about the book that I'm going to read later today. When I'm reading, I'm thinking about the snack that I want to have. And when I'm eating, I think about playing. Right? When I'm playing, I think, man, I really could use a nap. So Panda says, well, that's just it. Your monkey mind keeps jumping from one thing to another to another always somewhere other than here, always to something other than what you're doing right now. 
monkey says, well, isn't that what every mind does? Isn't that what everybody does? The panda says, well, no. When I'm walking, I'm just walking. When I'm eating, I'm just eating. When I'm napping, I'm just napping. The panda goes on to say, true happiness really comes from bringing all your attention to whatever you are doing right now. There's no need to think about what happened yesterday. Yesterday is gone, over, done. And there's no need to worry about tomorrow. Tomorrow isn't here. But today is all around us. So bringing your mind back to this moment right here, over and over and over again, is mindfulness. Take a look at this photo. I want you to think for a moment, where do you spend most of your time? Are you like the photo on the left-hand side? A lot going on in there? A lot of thoughting happening? Is your mind full? Or are you like the photo on the right-hand side, really practicing mindfulness? I know that most of us spend our time more like the photo on the left, a lot going on. Usually our mind is jumping from things in the past or things in the future. We're also judging, right? Is it good, is it bad? We're jumping all around. So we might be thinking about past accomplishments, memories, experiences, or past regrets, mistakes, failures. We might be thinking about the future, hopes and dreams and goals. Or where a lot of us spend our time thinking about the future in terms of worries and doubts and fears. So we're jumping around to all these different spots. Our mind is very, very full, but it's not full of the present moment. Right? So mindfulness is being present right? And without judgment. Okay. I'll share this quote with you that I really like. It says, peace is the result of retraining your mind to process life as it is, rather than as you think it should be. A good lesson for us all. So what are some of the elements of mindfulness? Well, like Monkey and Panda tried to teach us, awareness is element number one. Paying attention on purpose, being more in the present, more in the now. The next, non-judgment. Seeing things as they are, not as good or bad, and trying to let go of really wanting us to have it our way. So I really like this photo, it's of a child that looks to be dressed in a peanut costume. And their mom has obviously put a sign on their back that says, don't judge me, don't judge my mom, I dress myself. <laughs> and then non-reactive, choosing a response rather than the reflex or automatic response that's gonna come up. Because usually the automatic response is something like mm, anger, frustration, Right. Um, now, we don't spend all of our time in this mindfulness space. That's not the goal. But the goal is to try and bring more awareness to the present moment, have more moments where we identify that we're judging and pull it back a little bit. Right? Identify when we are just about to react and pull it back some. Right? It's not spending our whole lives there. It's just being a little bit more mindful of giving a reset to the way we're more wired to be. Why does this matter? Well, it matters because there are actually a lot of benefits to using mindfulness. There's a lot of studies out there that indicate how this can be helpful to us. It impacts your brain activity. So a few benefits, reducing stress, right? improving focus, improving mood. And when we reduce stress, we can have a lot of other positive effects too. 
right? Improved sleep, decreased anxiety, right? Um, less frustration and irritation. So what mindfulness is not? Mindfulness is not avoidance, denial, right? We're still going to visit the places and spaces of worry and stress. And I would say that it's also important to visit and think about the future. For planning purposes, we need to do that. But it's just knowing when we're moving from just being a visitor in those places to actually moving in permanently. Okay. Mindfulness is really our reset button. Okay. You may hear of mindfulness as a practice. I hope you will all appreciate my cartoon that I took a while to find, but um, mindfulness is a practice. That really is an intentional phrase because it is a practice. It's something that doesn't come automatic to us. But if we work at it, we can improve that strength, right? This is something that we can build on. And it is free to do, right? Doesn't take a lot of time, right? And the more consistent we are with practicing it, um, the better and better and better off we are with bringing mindfulness into our daily routine, even without some of the exercises that we'll talk about. So how do we practice? Well, like I said, if you practice with exercises, then it will become more natural in your daily life, and you may not have to have exercises all the time to bring that mindfulness focus in. But exercises are a great way to really start building that muscle. So really we say 10 minutes a day is all you need. And don't start with 10 minutes a day. Start with one or two minutes and build up there. Mindfulness practice can really be unique to you. Anything that you're bringing your attention and intention to can be a mindful practice. Okay? So I'll give some examples. One of my personal favorites for those of us that are just starting out and really starting to build this is using a guided meditation or a guided imagery. We'll talk about some of the resources for that in subsequent slides, but this is a great way because you don't have to do a lot of work, right? You just press play and be present and it will guide you through whatever your focus is for that meditation. It could be a meditation for stress, for sleep, for joy. Right? And as you build that, you'll be able to utilize that in other settings, things that you might do in your daily life already. So nature, you'll be able to build a mindfulness exercise around nature and we'll talk about what that could look like. Humor, listening to music, scents and aromatherapy, prayer, now, mindfulness is not a religious practice, but if you already have prayer in your life, then you can definitely have that as part of a mindfulness exercise. Mantras, choosing statements that bring about peace or joy um, to repeat as part of your exercise. And one of my personal favorites, which is a gratitude practice. So this is an example of what a gratitude practice could look like. It's listing at night three things that you're grateful for before bed. Right? Sounds simple, but if you do this each night, you'll actually allow yourself to really slow and enjoy that moment more. Just imagine smiling and thanking each of those three items that you're grateful for. Just be present with your gratitude. Doing this and doing this consistently actually does help to shift your focus away from the negative and more into a positive space. That can ease stress, that can boost mood. It can also set you up nicely for bed because you're a little bit more relaxed. The other thing you'll notice if you do this more consistently is you'll start identifying things throughout your day that you're grateful for. Oh, that's the thing that I wanna say tonight. Oh, that's the thing that I wanna say tonight. And that in and of itself brings more mindfulness throughout your day. Another exercise, and we'll go through a few of these just as examples so that you can pick and choose if there's any of these that really resonate with you, try them. This is finding the beauty and wonder in nature. 
Spend a few moments this week observing nature. Just describe to yourself what you're looking at. Allow yourself to slow down and enjoy the moment. Notice that thoughts will come in and out and just let them go. Acknowledge the thoughts that come up and imagine them just passing by like a cloud in the sky and just be present with nature. Another exercise is finding peace and calm using scent, right? So spend a few moments this week observing a pleasant scent. That could be something like a lavender scented candle, a lotion, coffee. Just describe to yourself the aroma. Allow yourself to slow down and enjoy that moment. Notice the other thoughts do come up, in and out, and let them just go by. Acknowledge the thoughts and imagine them just passing by like a scent on the wind and just be. Another, one of my personal favorites, finding joy in music. So I'll challenge you to spend 10 minutes this week listening to an enjoyable song. Preferably a song without words. It tends to work a little bit better if you're using a song without words. Can you commit to listening to that without distraction? Just listen. Allow yourself to slow down and enjoy that moment. Notice the other thoughts that come in and out and let them go. Acknowledge the thoughts and imagine them just passing by like music notes on the wind and just be with the music. So we also have some other resources that are available. Now there are a lot of resources out there for mindfulness. Um, these are just a few. What I will say is there may be some that don't resonate with you. Try out some. If you don't like it, move on. There are plenty of resources out there that don't be stuck with doing something that you don't like. Right? If you don't like the music that's playing in the background, if you don't like the person's voice, right? don't sit with that. Move on to something else. There are a few apps uh, that you can download for your phone or device. A few of those um, are free. So the first two, the UCLA Mindful app and Insight Timer are free. Calm and Headspace are apps that are subscription-based. There are also websites that offer a lot of different um, guided meditations, guided imagery, other mindfulness practices that you can do. So I've listed a few of those here. Also, a favorite of mine is YouTube because it's easy, it's accessible, and there's a lot of content there. All you have to do is go to YouTube and in the search bar, think about what would I really like to focus on today? So that could be searching for maybe a guided meditation on anxiety, a guided meditation on sleep, right? Whatever it is, type it into your search bar. You're gonna find options, many options to choose from. And you can also see the time of each of those. You can pick things that are in shorter duration or longer duration, depending on what you want. The other thing that's an obvious resource um, is the ALS support groups. And while this isn't specifically based on mindfulness, I will say that the sense of community and connection um, that support groups can foster is really an incredible resource as well. So, with that, I want to wrap up today. Again, this was a brief, really, introduction to mindfulness and quality of life, but I want to wrap up today with a guided imagery exercise. So all you have to do for this exercise is be present and close your eyes. So to begin, close your eyes and just relax and let go. Feel the tension and stress in your body releasing. With your eyes closed, visualize all the tension and stress just melting away. 
leaving your body. Starting from the crown of your head, imagine a beautiful, golden, bright light over you. The light comes down and surrounds you in a beautiful, warm light. With your eyes closed, imagine that light coming over your forehead, your eyes, and your cheeks. Over your jaw, the back of your head, your neck. Just feel the tension melting away. Feel that golden light coming down, melting away the tension, and releasing what no longer serves you. And with your eyes closed, feel the light melting away the tension in your chest, relaxing your shoulders, down your back, this warm glowing light over your thighs, and your knees, over your ankles, and into your feet. This calming light going from the top of your head down through your body, through your feet, and into the floor. And just letting go of all the tension in your body. Feeling more at ease more at peace, more relaxed. Remember that this light is always there for you. This light you can call upon whenever you need to feel more at ease. Now coming back into the room, flutter your eyes open. Just coming back to the present moment. Take notice of how you feel. We don't do things like this often enough. But if we do, even for just a couple minutes a day, it can make a difference. So with that, with peace and with light and with many, many thanks, I want to again say thank you for allowing me to talk with you today. Um, if you have questions, I think we have a few minutes for questions. Um, and I'll also be outside at the Mayo table today from 11 to 2. So if you have any questions for me, feel free to come visit me, say hello, ask questions there too. Thank you.